Okay, we're back here to change out the TXV. It's been a couple days I had to order the TXV. And uh, what I'm going to do now is the homeowners went on vacation, but I told them I could control the system functions from the air handler uh, in order to check it out and charge it. In fact, it may be a little cold to charge it on subcooling today. A uh, cold front came through North Carolina here, and it is now about 10 degrees colder than it was at lunchtime. It's only been a couple hours, so it's probably in the mid-60s, low-60s. And typically, you need it around 65 uh, to get a proper subcooling reading off of TXV. <clears throat> what I wanted to do first was I want to check the defrost board, because I can't go inside because they're not here, to make sure we're set in cooling. Because when I pump the system down using the contactor, I'm going to need the system to be in cooling for the pop proper refrigerant flow, so I can pump the refrigerant into the condenser coil, uh, which is a lot easier to do with R22. If this was R410A, that might not be possible because of the pressure, <clears throat> the pressure differences. Okay, so what I'll want to see is whether or not between common and this orange right here, which is a reversing valve, make sure we have 24 volts. I got our leads on there, and we do have voltage, so it is set in cooling, so it will work just fine. The next step is you want to take your liquid service valve and shut it all the way off because you don't want to pump any more refrigerant out of the air conditioner and cooling. You want to pump it into the outdoor coil and keep it there until the repair is over. Okay, I'll now set the uh, <clears throat> service valve wrench on the suction valve so when our unit is done pumping down we'll notice the pressure will be dropping. Once it gets to zero we can go ahead and shut it off and then release the contactor. We're going to depress the contactor to do this because if we only put the unit into air conditioning, it may run for a while and shut off on low pressure and still leave some of the refrigerant in the lines. We want to get all of it out of the lines. Uh, <clears throat> and the only way to keep the compressor running is to keep that compressor, uh, the contactor depressed. As you see, our pressure is now at zero and we can go ahead and make our repair. Uh, we go ahead and repressurize the lines with nitrogen to check our repair then pull a vacuum and release the charge back into the system. And host, uh, <clears throat> Alright, now that our pressure is down to zero, we can go ahead and make our repair. We can then repressurize the lines with nitrogen, make sure the repair is holding, and then we can move on to vacuuming the line set, and then re, uh, releasing the charge, and hopefully the charge is correct. All we had was a TXV issue. Alright, we're taking the TXV off. It had a bolt here. See you right See if I can get it in there. Bolt here that goes into the air handler, and a bolt that goes to the liquid line. It's falling down here. Hold on. The bolts in right here. That's the bolt right there. So this is real easy. All I gotta do is take those two bolts off. TXV is free. I move it out of the way. We'll unbolt it from over here. We have a sensing bulb underneath here and equalizing tube. So we'll go ahead and put the new TXV on so we don't have to leave anything open. It's real easy repair. You won't have to braze. Uh, so we'll just tighten it up. Uh, this time I'll have an advantage I didn't have last time when I first did this, which was nylog. Uh, the nylog folks say that you can put this on gaskets, seals. I think they had it on like a head gasket too for like a um, combustion engine. And they would put it on and put the nylog on there and it would cause it to come off just like the first day, even after years of use. So these O-rings that are in here, I'm going to go ahead and use it on those, and I'll wrap the threads with them as well, just as an extra precaution. Uh, because these things wear out over time. Compression fittings are a real pain in the butt, because always, it's only a matter of time before they'll leak. Uh, maybe we can add years onto it with this stuff. All right, our TXV is back on. Our little housing's in place uh, to keep it from sweating as badly. I'll know how well it really works. It doesn't... Seems like it does, probably. And uh, we're going to pressure check it now, and then we'll move on to vacuum if everything's okay. All right, our pressure held at about 185 PSI for about 20 minutes. So I have took it off, as you see, let it out through there. I'm going to take both these hoses off now, on both the gauge ports. I'm going to put on my valve core removers and take the cores out so I can get ready to perform a vacuum. All right, the vacuum's been running for a few seconds. It's quieting down now. It does a real good job. Uh, come down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit slower than it would be if it was. Uh, it really skyrockets on dry systems. If you have a brand new line set and a brand new coil, it really zips down. Uh, I remember earlier in the video, I was remarking how this motor was 
uh, shaking a little bit when it started or kind of going back and forth. And I was wondering whether or not that was a problem that the motor was having. Uh, so I did some research on it and in fact it is not a problem. Uh, many of you might know this already, but these particular motors will hunt back and forth to sense a proper rotation and then they will take off in the proper rotation. So there's actually uh, a perfectly normal part of operation whenever they hunt for the first few seconds back and forth to find the proper rotation. Uh, <clears throat> if it does it for more than four or five seconds it's a problem, but uh, what we saw earlier on the video was just a normal operation. Now I'm going to put some jumpers in so we can make a call for cooling and a call basically for the compressor, the fan, and the reversing valve. Alright, I got my alligator clips on the transformer hot. I got two going to the variable speed board for the fan and for Y. The other one jumpered to the reversing valve wire nut space. Alright, the system's running. The TXV is working much better. Uh, low head pressure. Uh, probably flooding the evaporator to bring the superheat down. Uh, hold on. They're 5.7, 5.5. So a little bit low on the sub cooling, not too bad. Uh, one of the issues we have here is at 64.7 degrees. Technically, it's supposed to be done at 65 degrees or higher. Uh, if it stays that close, I'm not going to fool with it because technically we're not in the the temperature zone to be charging it anyway. So everything looks pretty good here. I'll let it run for a few more minutes to make sure we don't have any surprises. And I think we're good to go. Uh, John with Israel HVAC, this is for you. Uh, I saw your video the other day of cleaning your mother-in-law's unit. thought it was a real cool product, so I went out and bought one. Uh, I think it's going to be real beneficial for, for doing my preventive maintenance stuff. It's about to kick off here. And uh, I think it would be a perfect product for making short work of it and do a good job. I went out and got some coil cleaner too down there. Uh, it really impressed me. I thought it did a great job. Uh, anyone out there who hasn't seen Israel HVAC's channel needs to check it out. Real good stuff and a uh, good product too. Well, I'm all done over there at the TXV changeout. The sub cooling ended up being around uh, 6, so we were even in acceptable ranges. Uh, it was a little cold to do the actual charging for the TXV, but I'm satisfied that we're good to go. Everything worked out great. Uh, the ECM blower was coming on without the call from the fan and for a call for cooling, but I think we may have an issue with that little harness and wire plug going from the variable speed, variable speed control board to the ECM module. Uh, I don't know if you can get those separately, but I'm going to try that. Maybe we'll get some film of that when it happens. But uh, thank everybody for watching. Take care.